Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. My uh, name is Jane Sugimura, and I am your host for this show. And we're still, uh, our shows are, uh, I'm doing a series of shows on resources for condominiums and uh, their owners. And today, we're going to showcase a really special organization. It's called MRMA, M-R-M-A. And it stands for Mo'ili Ili Resident Managers Association. And I'm really pleased to have with me today uh, Murma's uh, current president, Ben Merritt. Hi, Ben. Hello, Jane. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And, and, and you know, we, we, I, I want you to, uh, we're going to be spending the, the next uh, 25 minutes or so talking about Murma. And what, but before we do that, why don't you tell our viewers about your background. What is your background? I've been in the resident manager business for probably 25, 30 years and uh, have used to have a business called interim management services that uh, when people would go on vacation and such, I was the filler and that afforded me to uh, manage many, many buildings in town. Some of the really nice ones and some of the uh, older ones. And I wound up my career in resident manager at Harbor Square downtown as their general manager. And I've been retired now for about two and a half years. Okay, well, you've got a lot of experience then, you know, to, to share yes, with our viewers. It turns out that I do. And I it was uh, quite the uh, joy and uh, luck that would have given me that kind of uh, experience. Okay, well, why don't you tell our viewers, what exactly is MRMA? MRMA is uh, a community outreach program that uh, comes together and solves the condominium problems for the resident managers. So we get together and uh, solve problems. It's a great community chest of uh, answers for people that have problems in different trade areas, elevators, stairwells, uh, lights, plumbing, the whole gamut. And we maintain a preferred vendors list that are our associate sponsors. And they, uh, in turn, have exclusive um, uh, they, let's see, I'm trying to, see. okay, they're are, are on a list that we, they do good work, they're conscientious, and we use them first, so. And, so you, you're, you're a resource, so if, if you've got a, 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 a site manager or a resident manager who's looking for uh, a plumbing contractor or a structural engineer, I mean, rather than you know, look in the phone book or, or go online to just, you know, see what's available. You probably That's want exactly to talk to right. somebody who's had some experience. That's right? exactly right, Jane. And um, that is part of the function of the preferred vendors list, as you said, that when a particular uh, need arises and it's, uh, you're not going to uh, the phone book and you are getting a recommendation from another resident manager that has had that experience and knows that the job will get done in a professional fashion. Okay, and how, how, who can join? Who can join this organization? I'm sorry? Who can join the, uh, this, uh, who can oh, join it, Lerma? It's open to building managers statewide. If you're a resident manager, a site manager uh, that has function and responsibilities to a building, you're eligible to join. And we're, we're flashing your, your website information. Is that where they would be contacting if they wanted yes, to join the organization? Yes, they would be contacting. Uh, we have, we rotate that uh, contact person. More times than not, it will be Blanche King, our uh, vice president, and uh, whoever is uh, with her on that committee uh, it will be on the website. And so how often do you guys, do you guys have meetings? Yes, we meet every month 
and it's the second Thursday of the month, and we meet February through November. We don't meet in December or January because of holidays and uh, such. And, you know, during the pandemic, have you been able to have your meetings? Uh, no, actually, unfortunately, we have not been able to have meetings because of the state's mandate of the crowd gathering, and it's limited to sometimes five, and then it was 10. I think now it's back up to around 50, and we are certainly keeping tabs on that as far as our opportunity, and with all uh, hopes and uh, planning, we are going to start back meeting at Waikiki Yacht Club, um, hopefully in February. Ben, can you tell us how this organization started? How did, how did Murma come about? Well, uh, originally, it was probably back, I think, in the early 2000, 2001, and um, fellow Mike Venable was uh, having a brown bags meeting for lunch to do just that, solve problems, have some of the managers come around and meet so that they could uh, ping each other, pick one another's brain, and they bring pizza and, a, you know, do just have a lunch hour at one of the buildings. And Mike came up, because it was in Moilili Valley, that is uh, kind of where it started at Mike's building. And it grew, and we were going to call it one time Oahu uh, Manager Association, but uh, we figured that Murma was just almost as was original, and we, we just decided to keep it. And I can remember Mike Venable. In fact, he invited me to one of his early meetings, uh, and 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 he was just a remarkable person. And yes, he, he was. So much, yeah. He had so much energy, and he was so positive. And well, he I, had the energy that uh, we hoped that it was contagious, and he would always be in the upper echelon of uh, the political arena here in town. And back when uh, Linda Linga was mayor in Maui, he had her that one of her first uh, times speaking for us was over here. And we do stay in touch with the political uh, people that are going to be able to affect our condo laws and such. Yes, and you know, he, he, was, he was a very dynamic person. And, and you know, when I first met him and I started going to some of the Murma meetings, I was surprised, you know, uh, that, you know, that he was able to get the buildings in, in the neighborhood to meet for lunch. And then, yes, you know, and I stayed in touch and now you guys are meeting up at the Waikiki Yacht Club and, you know, you get a gang of people out there. Yes, it uh, started with probably uh, less than 10 people, and he was the great organizer and the authoritative uh, presence that it was, like I said, a little contagious, and we got happy about it, and just so happened I was a member uh, down at the Yacht Club, and uh, we started doing that, and uh, our uh, attendance uh, tripled, and now we, uh, we have, I think, uh, only average excuse me, on the average of between 60 and 75 people or managers and uh, associate vendors that meet on a regular basis at the Yacht Club, like I said, on the second Thursday of every month. And, you know, among the, uh, when you do these uh, in-person uh, monthly meetings, not only do you have your membership, but you have people, you know, who work, who vendors and contractors uh, and operators, right, who, who serve the condominium community, you have them sponsoring the lunches and, yes. and actually being present at the luncheon themselves to do networking among the general, um, uh, the resident managers that you've got, right? That is correct. And that is one way we kind of vet the vendors that we use. And if we have someone uh, new in town or that has not been affiliated with our uh, association and we use that particular contractor or vendor on a job in a, uh, one of our sister buildings and it turns out well, we'll ask them to come and would they like to uh, sponsor a meeting and uh, throw their wares out to uh, our 
membership so that more people can take advantage of quality uh, contracting and vending. And at these um, monthly meetings that you have, you also have speakers who, who speak on, on different issues, right? So what kind of speakers do you have come and address your, your group? I'm sorry, repeat that, please. On your monthly meetings, you have people who come and, and present to the group. Yes, that was part of uh, our associate sponsors, contractors, and uh, even some of our uh, uh, like insurance people uh, or uh, political people, we have that arena as well. And uh, our members are always thirsty for that kind of knowledge as well. Yes, and especially now, I, I you know, because right now I think a, a lot of your members are probably dealing with the fire safety ordinance. Yes. Right? That, and that you're that, going through life safety evaluations and whatnot. And with all the, you know, new COVID rules and unfortunately the uh, Marco Polo fire that, that uh, was devastating to uh, many people there is going to affect change in the way some of the things are done in condo living. Right. And so, I mean, so it's, it's helpful to have at least, you know, the, uh, your professional speakers, you know, pre, I mean, presenters come and share their knowledge with your group and then to have your group kind of network amongst themselves and with their, the vendors and uh, contractors who are there at your, your meetings. Yes, that it's a very unique blend and with the resident managers and the associate sponsors and contractors, vendors and such, when they get together and the meeting's done, it's a, a, a huge exchange of, okay, I can do this. And then you know, these guys will recommend how to do it another way. And it just, it gets done and it gets done professionally. Well, you know, let me go over some of the, some of the accomplishments that, you know, Merma's been involved in uh, because they were involved in working with the city in stabilizing the bulky item pickup yes. in Honolulu. Why don't you talk about how you guys helped with that? Well, it was the, I guess, uh, ge the geography, uh, you know, people that just would come out and throw out old couches and beds, windows, air conditioners, and they would wind up in, you know, sporadically different places. And we chatted with the city to uh, get designation on an area so that when a city vehicle that was designated to come by a uh, designated spot and that it didn't look trashy and, and it would, you know, all be there. And now there's, you can um, go on their website and there's uh, telephone numbers that you don't have to leave it up there, but maybe hours instead of days as before. You make an apartment carry your items out and, you know, the truck that's going to pick it up is almost there. And also too, um, with at all of your meetings, you have somebody from HPD, from the Honolulu Police Department. Yes, we do. To give this, the, the staff. And we are, that's a dedicated uh, uh, service or, or uh, that HPD provides for us, the stats of, uh, car break-ins, thefts, uh, home break-ins, condo break-ins, and it, they package it up and we can get a written version. You can, we always ask them to uh, give us the info to put on our website and they uh, faithfully come to our meetings and always have at least one or two officers that like to speak and it has become part of their requirement of public uh, speaking is such that they are tasked with uh, oration for uh, to a public uh, presence so that they can get those stats out to everyone concerned. And also the fact that you have the, the police officers, the police department at your luncheons, uh, you've been uh, you've been able to get them to uh, extend their patrolling 
to different yes, areas yes. that that are that really mean something to the condominium community to sometimes there are yes. some side streets that are used by children and, and elderly people and you know and and you know they could you know uh, and that it was definitely a plus uh for us as an organization to have that long arm that would request more presence of uh HPD in uh, troubled areas and where, like you said, that where kids play and, you know, it has calmed those areas immensely. And we we're very uh, appreciative to HPD and all their efforts monthly and daily, I should say. And uh, they're always welcome. And so that's one way that, you know, and uh, the, the police department is able to work uh, with the condominium community uh, to 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 you know bring benefits uh, to the condominium community that they didn't have, and so that's that's a great way you know resource uh, you know that Murma has offered to the community that they serve. Yes, that uh, and we will always be in their debt for you know uh, having their presence where we need it when we need it, and they always respond. And you know, one other thing too, I noticed with your you know monthly meetings, you have city council people, you have city council people showing up, and and that might be because a lot of issues that you know that affect condominiums are probably regulated by the city, like rubbish removal, and and uh, and property taxes, and and you know and basically, you know, the fire and police service. Right. We have a lot of uh, requirements and regulations that come from the city. And when we uh, have a need or an, up or need an update of something that has uh, just been introduced or put out by the city, uh, we can call on them and they will come and uh, give their information to us on a speaking platform. Also with the insurance uh, industry, for people like uh, Sue Savio and that organization of insurance people, they are always willing to keep us up to date on, you know, what should belong in our uh, uh, reserve analysis and uh, other governing documents and uh, you bring up a, a a a good subject i mean reserve studies so it's the site manager or the resident manager who works with the reserve specialist to set up this to set up the uh reserve study isn't it that is exactly right jane and the uh, reserve analysis is like an outline of what you must have on hand in the case of an emergency and the board spends many hours or the boards of many uh, condominium complexes spend tremendous amount of hours developing what the priorities are that go into the uh, reserve analysis so that they can be covered at any point in time for any catastrophe. And you guys have been doing that for a long, long time, haven't you? The yes, this is true. And you know, and now there's a lot of focus on the uh, on the reserve studies and uh, the reserves because of what happened in Florida with that condominium collapse. And now people who didn't even know about reserves are asking questions about reserves. Well, it's it it it's would behoove anyone. I don't know too many buildings that don't have some sort of a reserve analysis going on, so that they can look and see what their uh, component lifespan is in any uh, situation. So, uh, and that is like an outline for the resident manager. Uh, he goes through his daily routines and monthly preventative maintenances. And then when you come to the end of the year, what are you going to project to uh, spend a large sum of money on so that you can keep all the uh, components of the building working properly and no one wants to uh, have equipment break and you don't have enough funding to 
uh, replace or repair? Yes, you know, the, the reserve study is such an important tool, you know, for a condominium. And you guys, you know, you resident managers, I mean, you guys are the key. I mean, I, I know during our budgeting process, I mean, our budget committee, we were going through our budget. I, you know, I was, I had my site manager on the phone and I'd be asking him, you know, what about this? Can we put this one off? And he'd say, no, 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 you can't do that. That you gotta, you gotta keep in the, you know, you gotta go forward and that's with that. exactly what that is. I mean, it's, um, it's a seesaw of, you know, what needs to be done, what you have the money for. And no good resident manager likes to see deferred maintenance because it'll, you either fix it now or you're going to fix it later. But if it's deferred down the line too far, you're going to spend double of the money you had allotted for that particular project. So the reserve analysis is, is a very, very important tool. Yes, and, and, and now during budget season, I mean, uh, and, and especially after the for Florida building collapse, you know, people, you know, are more, I think, appreciative of the fact that, you know, uh, people like, you know, you guys, the resident managers have been working with this tool for what, 20, 30 years, and, you know, have been working diligently to make sure that, you know, that tool is used to make sure the building is well-maintained, is safe, and you know is is going to uh, you know th that the cost to uh, maintain the building going forward is going to be reasonable and not excessive. And so I give you you know big mahalos for that because you guys have done a terrific job. Well, it's uh, it's quite the responsibility, and sometimes the resident managers are the unsung heroes that. Uh, they are constantly on the job 24 seven because the building doesn't sleep. It just, there's less people at night or whatever you got securities and such. Uh, but they do, most of them do a fantastic job at keeping the condo life a, a safe place for people to live. And that's what your organization is all about, right? Offering a, 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 a venue or, you know, a place for, you know, for resident managers and site managers to get together with their peers, with other resident managers and, and site managers and ch exchange information. Exactly. And Mike Venable said it best when he first uh, was coining the phrase, we are an outreach community program and community being uh, uh, capitalized there because uh, resident man everyone has to live someplace and resident managers and with an organization like we have that emphasizes comfortable living clean quality uh living it's just uh it makes condo life very uh it, it, um, very palatable livable and you guys are the glue basically that holds everything together. I mean, I, I can speak to that because, you know, as president of my association, I don't know what I do without my site manager. Well, it gives, it gives a standard that if we hold our managers uh, to a standard that is like I was saying earlier, contagious, uh, it makes the rest of the managers in the, uh, in town try to aspire to keep their buildings on a up and up in a very professional platform. Okay, we're getting to the end of our time and I really, really appreciate uh, you sh uh, being a guest on our Condo Insider show. And, uh, and you know, I, I wish you and your organization uh, much success. I know you, you, you seem to get bigger and, and, and stronger, I mean, as the years go by. And I know Mike would be so pleased uh, to, to know that you've got, you've done such huge, uh, you know, significant outreach in the community. Well, I certainly appreciate you having us on and um, we will forever strive to keep improving our uh, quality of condo living. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, uh, the viewers, for tuning in to another episode of Condo Insider. And next week it's Thanksgiving, so we're, we're not gonna have a show. And I wanna wish on behalf of the 
uh, Condo Insider, uh, my other co-hosts, uh, a very happy Thanksgiving. And please tune in on the following week for uh, a really uh, important show. And this is Condo Insider is the show for people who live and work in condos. And thank you very much for sharing your time with me and Ben Merritt of Murma today. Thank you very much. Mahalo. Mahalo.